Hello and welcome to Crutchfield Live, everybody. I'm your host, JR. I'm the training manager here at Crutchfield. Joined in studio today by my uh, my cohort in Crutchfield, the podcast, yeah. Eric. Glad How to be are here. you? Great. Glad to be here. Excellent. Uh, normally we're in the, we're in separate buildings, or he's at home and I'm at home, or uh, we're talking on the podcast. It's rare that we get to be in the same room together. Yeah. And feature our uh, lovely smiling faces for all of you all. Thank you, everybody that's already joined us here on the live. Uh, we've got a bunch of people that have already uh, were waiting in the waiting room and are already saying hi. Before I even get to our agenda for the day, uh, medieval 1980. Good afternoon, everybody. Right on. Metal Ghost, uh, hello from New Mexico. I have loved Crutchfield for decades. Me too. Heck yes. Uh, Steve Warfield <laughs> says, hello all. Mitchell Reese, hello from North Carolina. Bruce Reed, good afternoon from Syracuse, New York. We are all over the country already. This nice. is fantastic. Aaron Robbins, hiya. That's, hiya all, that's all you need. Right hiya there. right that's back to you. perfect, Aaron. <laughs> uh, Ramon's first uh, take, Ramon's first take movie reviews. Hola. Just as good as Haya. S. Silno uh, Chow from San Francisco. Wow, coming in. Oh I my like God, it. this is fantastic. Uh, here's what we're doing today, everybody. We are talking subs. It is all about subwoofers. Uh, and we're going to focus on home powered subs, not car subs, really, today. Uh, I hope to, I hate to disappoint anybody that was here for car subwoofers. That was the last episode. It was. Uh, but yeah. let me assure you. Home-powered subwoofers, especially the, some of the ones we will be featuring in the, in today's show, uh, pretty impressive and uh, pretty important if you want to really get the full maximum oomph out of your home stereo. 100% agree. I've always said for home theater, the meat and potatoes of a home theater setup, it's a center channel That's the and meat. the subwoofer. And the subwoofer is the potatoes, or is it the other uh, way yeah, around? Maybe the... Maybe the sub is the meat. We'll have to. We'll come back. Yeah, on oh that. yeah, it's fine. Uh, we'll do a poll question sometime <laughs> yeah, or something. Sure, sure. Uh, we have more people. Two powerhouses in Crutchfield and SVS. That's from S. Silno. Medieval 1980 says same here. Metal. I used to look forward to their catalogs in the mail all the time. Way back in the day, they're having their own conversation. Hey, I don't know I, if I need to read I, I, I don't know every one of those comments. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, but yeah, talk amongst yourselves. Talk to us. That's great. Uh, Anthony Hayet, uh, checking in from Pikesville, Maryland, home of Polk Audio. Nice. Absolutely. Very cool. We've been dealing with Polk. I uh, love Polk. I for, have for a long time. Oh, I love this name. Retro VHS. Hello from Alabama. Wow. Heck I, yeah. That's nice. Aaron Robbins, home theater is my great non-human love. <laughs> I'm glad you qualified that. Uh, the Lizard King 998. Uh, hello from Indiana. Right on. Uh We've got people on Facebook as well. Let's shout out to uh, Chris says hello. Ernie says more SVS. Aaron says waving hello from Northern Michigan. Gary, hey from West Virginia. Steve says hello from San Ramon, California. If these keep coming in, we might have to not give every single one of these shout outs uh, because the show needs some substance. And by right. substance, I'm talking about base. Yes. Uh, we've, here's what we're going to do today. Uh, we are in... The Stakes. We are giving away SVS subwoofers, plural. We will have more details to come later in the episode, including a code word, mm -hmm. uh, which will, uh, if you take that and enter it into the sweepstakes form, you get an extra 25 entries into the sweepstakes. So keep listening. We're going to be talking with Nick from SVS. So actual SVS people will be joining us mm -hmm. all the way from Munich, Germany, uh, where it is like 10.30 at night or something like that. Wow. Uh, but he's going to come in live. He's, he's going to be the guy to give us the code word so that you can enter that and get yourself more entries into the, uh, the sweepstakes. That's Eric, awesome. you, I know you're wondering, no, you are not eligible for the sweepstakes. Why am I here again? I, exactly. I didn't. I, you, that's the only reason you agreed to do this, right? Dang it. Uh, we will also be taking a look at uh, a couple SVS-powered subwoofers that we have pulled out of our inventory. We have a brand new one. Mm -hmm. We have one that we call Open Box or mm -hmm. Outlet Stock. All the same model, to be clear. Exact same yeah, sub, yeah, yeah. Uh, same color and everything. And mm -hmm. we have one that we would call Scratch and Dent. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you those uh, and ask you to... Guess which one is which. Uh, so we got that coming up as a poll question here in just a few minutes. 
Uh, we're also going to create a Spotify playlist that is great songs for subwoofers. Eric and I have already uh, made some submissions. We've started that playlist, but we would love to know what songs you have in mind for a uh, for what songs do you, what's your go-to song when you want to test out how good your sub is? Mm -hmm. So we're going to come back to that here in just a little bit. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, we're, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at Crutchfield hashtags. We tried to do this in just about every episode, but we just ran out of time last show. We, we had so much fun, we just couldn't get to all of the hashtags. Uh, and there are people out there, uh, you might be some of them, where you've gone on Instagram, et cetera, and uh, you are hashtagging Crutchfield with the cool stuff you've bought and installed and things like that. Uh, so I think we have some ready. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pop those up on the screen. I have no idea what these are gonna be or look like, but Derek, uh, if you have any thoughts on what we're seeing here, I'm digging this. Uh, you know, typically when we're talking car stereo oh, yeah. these days, it's all about like touch screens and backup cameras. This is just a sweet single din what's, CD player. It is, but what side of the steering wheel is that on? Oh, look at that. Uh -huh. Unless this is one of those, it's not a selfie picture, right? Where no, everything's no, backwards. No, no, the is, is straight there, so. Yeah, no. you're right. So this is uh, from somewhere in the, uh, in the UK. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't, Was that a UK Let's accent? not do the no, accents. No, That's probably not a good that's idea. Not a good idea at all. Uh, I'm digging that. Uh, ooh, what's this? We got nice. uh, kind Some of sound speakers that down in there. Yeah. Uh, is that maybe? This looks like the rear door of like a four door pickup truck, right? Mm -hmm. With uh, with some new speaker in place of the factory speaker. Making sure it doesn't rattle. Yeah, I can't quite read what it says on the screen there. So if there's anything important I need to see, you're gonna have to just tell me what it is. It's a Subaru. It's not my Subaru, although my Subaru is the same color. <laughs> but uh, I'm digging it. You definitely need to replace the speakers in Ooh, a Subaru. Fancy. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that chandelier up top. That that is that is something. Well, can we? Where, where's the audio? Yeah, where's the stuff that we sell in that picture? It's got. Oh, well, I guess moving on. Yeah, thumbs thumbs up back at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thumbs up to this guy who's got a big rack of equipment up there. This looks like his work setup, maybe some sort of like a multi-room whole like commercial audio system or something like yeah. that. Who has uh, two thumbs and just made it on the show? This guy. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so we've got a computer in a car. We've got a dash taken apart uh, mid-installation. Our, our notes are visible there. Yeah, they're looking at our master sheets yeah. to show them how to get the dash apart. And, That's uh, pretty cool. Very nice. Uh, somebody's going to end. Ooh, and we've got a uh, an yeah. OEM interface, uh, one of those devices you kind of have to have in cars now to make it possible to replace your radio. Mm -hmm. uh, and this would be a typical installation. Man, I've been in this place many, many times. And you're wondering, how are you going to get it all back in the dash? Yeah, this person needs some Terra tape. Terra tape is nice because you can tape up all those wires and make them nice and tight so that it's not a big old mess of spaghetti behind yeah. the stereo. Before you put them back in, I hope that person taped up the wires. Yeah. Oh, this is clean. I'm digging this. Yeah. That's all the same person. This is all the same person. Wow. Oh, this is, oh, so, so this is the after. after. Very this nice. Is the very, so very nice. Yeah, so we've got, looks like we've got Apple uh, Maps on the screen using CarPlay. They've also installed uh, one of those USB uh, uh, extension yeah. things right there on the dash. Yeah, that's something that often folks don't think about is, you know, if you're going to hardwire USB into your radio, you know, you're going to need to extend that USB to another location. This person looks like they did it with one of our, maybe our marine USB uh, mm -hmm. uh, adapter and it uh, looks great. Well done. Oh, well, here we go. Got a TV. Yeah. And it's watching some left turns. <laughs> Uh, are there, is there, a, is that the sound bar behind some of that, uh, is that by that, behind that candle maybe? Yeah, maybe. Kind of hard to tell. Digging yeah. the TV though, looks yeah. good, wall mounted really nice. Ooh, extra battery. <coughs> sure enough, uh, that looks like a deep cell battery. Mm -hmm. <coughs> with a Crutchfield amplifier wiring kit, see the fuse holder mm -hmm. with Crutchfield on it, that stuff looks nice. Yeah, looks nice when inches it's of the battery like it should be. Yep, nice. really close. So providing all the safety that you need when you're installing your amp. Mm -hmm. Oh, a nice, uh, about to unbox a pretty high-end set of speakers, a nice amplifier. Heck yeah, this is going to be a great system when this goes in. Ooh. Big old Boss floating touchscreen with the volume knob. Love a volume knob. Yes, indeed. Uh, gotta love that. Uh, those Boss floating touchscreens are pretty sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that the uh, one of the carbon fiber speakers? That looks like... Uh, 
I'm going to say JBL, I'm, maybe? Maybe. I think the orange is making me lean toward JBL. It is. We're getting confirmation from the back. This is a JBL speaker. Right. Look at that factory speaker next to I was about to, to say. What type of cone is that in that uh That, that little factory? that little sort of, of paper? wizard cone wizard is what cone. that's called. That's yeah. what the factory speakers call a tweeter. Right. Uh, which is just a piece of cardboard that vibrates uh, and not very well yeah. or accurately. So yeah. put that tweeter like from JBL on there, you'll have much cleaner mids and highs. That's Guitars, we, trumpets, yeah. female vocals, everything sounds better. Yeah, that's why we replace speakers because yeah. they look like that right there. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, we got the Bose Flex. We gave a couple of these away a few weeks ago. Very nice. Uh, very cool. Uh, Abby or uh, Dylan had one of those uh, and was using it, and we gave it gave four of them away. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this is one of our winners. Yeah. It is one of our winners. Sent us back a picture of them using their or uh, op just yep. opened it. Yeah, the Bose Flex. Very cool. Thank you for doing that. Uh, and thank you for all the hashtag submissions. Uh, we love to show off uh, people uh, using, buying, ex ex enjoying, installing uh, any of the gear that you've gotten from Crutchfield. Thank you so much for all of those. We've got a bunch more shout outs. We've got some questions coming in nice. that we can ask Nick from SVS when he gets here. Uh, so specifically some cool stuff coming in. Uh, Aaron says, how can I figure out the number of subwoofers I need? Is there a square footage calculation? Ooh. That's, yeah. Yeah, Ooh. how many? The answer is more than you think you need. Yeah. <laughs> we might be able to get a little better answer than that. But, right, uh, true. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, if Nick doesn't want to, if I think Nick can probably help identify that. Yeah. Um, but we can also chime in with our thoughts on that later as yeah. well. Yeah, does she uh, give us any dimensions uh, of her space? Not yet. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, well, she did. Uh, so would you recommend multiple? Yeah, we'll come. Let's do it. Let me get this out of the way here. Uh, all right, Brian, no, this is somebody different. I was seeing some dimensions, but that's a totally different comment. So, uh, what do we want to do next? I think we are... You want to talk about a playlist? Nope, not yet. Okay. I think we want to, I think we want to talk about those subs over there. Okay. Uh, Sweet. and so we're going to do the poll question. We're going to get that ball rolling. Okay. Uh, I see submi submissions for the playlist are coming in. Sweet. Um, but first, let's do the subs over there. So we've got three subs. Are you going to go? Uh, you're going to go do yep. your Vanna White? Sure. I'll explain what's happening here. Uh, we've got three subs. We unboxed them. We've set them up. We've labeled them A, B, and C. One of these subs was literally just opened 20 minutes ago for the purposes of this. One of these subs is outlet stock, which means that's our Crutchfield's definition of open box is we send it out to a customer. They send it back within our 60-day money-back guarantee. And we hooked it up, we checked it out, we tested it, and everything is in like new condition. Even the box looks nice. So it is, uh, you probably shouldn't be able to tell the difference between open box and brand new. And one of these subs is scratch and dent. We didn't hand pick the scratch and dent to get one with no scratches and dents, but we did get one out of scratch and dent. And it's one of the three subs you're seeing here. And uh, your job is to tell us which one of these subs do you think is brand new? A, B, or C. And uh, I think to be totally fair, uh, Eric, is there any way you could like spin uh, the subs around one at a time so we can get a full 360 view? Sure. So people can use that. Uh, so we're doing A first. There you go, that side looks pretty clean. Back looking good. Sides looking good. Front. There we go. All right, so that's A. Going to B. We're trying to be as fair as we can. So before mm -hmm. you submit your poll answer, make sure you've seen all the sides of all the subs. So far, if I didn't have this piece of paper on my desk telling me which one was which, I couldn't have told you if uh, which one of those was open box, scratch and dent, or new. Now, I will say, all three of these subs look pretty darn good. When we call something scratch and dent, it is entirely possible for it to actually have a scratch or dent that would be visible. That is definitely something you could end up with if you buy something that is scratch and dent. We've actually done a really com you know, complete video on how we determine uh, brand new open box and scratch and dent. Uh, we're going to put a link to that video here in the comments on this on YouTube and on Facebook so that uh, if you want to go find out how we determine something is open box or scratch and dent, uh, you can see exactly how we do that. We took those videos in the warehouse where the people actually make the call. Right. 
And uh, you used to work over there at the warehouse. That, uh, that is true. And, that is true. Uh, and would you say we're pretty conservative on that, or, or like how do we? You know, how are we at doing? Oh that? yeah, I mean, it's important here at Crutchfield that we, you know, we try to exceed people's expectations any chance we can, right? Um, you know, it's entirely possible, like you mentioned, that a scratch and dent subwoofer uh, will have some scratch and dents, right? That's in the name. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we we still guarantee it works new. And in some cases, if you're thinking scratch and dent, you're going to be very happy with what it is that you what you know what shows up on your doorstep, uh, especially for something like a subwoofer, which often you know that's kind of out in the corner. Sometimes it's behind you in the room. You know, it, it, it's an opportunity to save a couple bucks on a. Awesome piece of gear. It's a great way to save some money. Save yes, some money. Absolutely. Um, full manufacturer's warranty, same return policy as anything else that we sell. You got a full sixty days to make sure full you're happy days. with it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So just a chance to save some money. So. Um, Excellent. Yeah. So submit your uh, answers to the poll question. I believe it's up on both YouTube and Facebook, so you can have a chance to do that. We'll see what the uh, results of that are later, and we'll reveal which sub is which. Yeah. Uh, so that's part of the show later on. Uh, now we're going to get into uh, creating a Spotify playlist. Uh, we've already got it started. We want to uh, sort of. We thought we could maybe do this with you, our uh, our Crutchfield Live viewers, uh, and let's come up with some songs that would be great to test out your subwoofer. Whether, and this is actually, this is gonna be a great playlist whether you're talking about your car subwoofer or your home powered sub. These sure. are songs that should make that thing rumble a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And so we have we have already started the playlist and we are going to add to the playlist here. Are, are we able to add live to it? Uh, I can do that, is anybody, is anybody else doing that or is it just me? We can all do it. We can all, you guys can do it like right now. Are you seeing them come in yep, and are you, and you're adding them in to the playlist? Beautiful, so keep your submissions coming. Uh, before we get to one of the songs that you and I have put on here, we've got mm -hmm. some people that had some uh, specific recommendations. Uh, where was it? Playlist, Basstronics 808 Dreams. That one just sounds like it is made for subwoofers. It does not sound subtle. I knew y'all <laughs> wanted that 808. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Somebody appreciated that. Uh, Mitchell Reese says, anything by Billie Eilish works because of the uncompressed bass. Yeah. Funny you should bring that up. Uh, one of Eric's first uh, submissions to the playlist was No Time to Die sure. by Billie Eilish. Absolutely. Nice. I mean, and Bad Guy is pretty great yeah. for bass, too. I love it when bass isn't just at one frequency, when it's not just a beat, but it has a bass drop, and that song's great for that. Man, the songs are coming in hot and heavy right now. Chemical Brothers, Under the Influence, Hit Mix, Hypox said, Eliminate Stupid. I hope he's not just talking to me, but I hope that's a song. Maybe, maybe he's an referring artist. to the new guy. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't be me. Um, Shale by G-O-X-O-R. I don't know how to say that one, but uh, SH3 Gelato is a great song to set up subs and highs. It features a high female vocal voice and truly deep Deep bass lows, a great way to make sure my subs aren't drowning out my vocals. Very nice. Going back to Cali, LL Cool J. Mm, nice, that's, kicking it old school. Yeah, right? that's, from, it. that's from back when you remember that. Yeah. You, During your formidable older, years. You're older than I am. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, we've got a pretty cool playlist going. I came up with some songs. Of course I put some songs from my two bands on this playlist. You'll have to find them though. Uh, they're right there. Uh, but Hamilton, Right Hand Man, pretty great song. Hmm. Not your typical, you might not think of uh, Broadway as the uh, <laughs> Usually bass, not. But uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda absolutely had massive subwoofers installed in the Richard Rogers Theater and mainly for that song because uh, there's cannons going off and stuff. Oh, so that's you're, a good point. You, yeah, it's a, it's a good one for subs. Uh, the Way You Move, Outcast, that's one of mine. Of course. Uh, what about this one here? I've never heard of this one that you submitted. Uh, let's see, is it Infected Mushroom? Right. Never so, mind. So knowing that we were going to have this conversation, yeah. I wanted to arm myself a little bit. And uh, luckily, we had uh, one, of our, uh, one of our reps was here demoing some other products for us, um, uh, Tim Painter. Uh, he's awesome. Shout out to Tim. Shout out to Tim. And uh he uh, he came up with a, a couple songs, and uh, that was one of his suggestions. And uh, it is 100% a torture test for a subwoofer or for a system. Yeah. So uh, it it moves very quickly, uh, gets kind of odd at the end, but it starts with a big bass drop and just keeps on going. So uh, if that's the kind of stuff you're into, that'd be a pretty good test. 
Nice. These songs are getting added right now live to the playlist. I'm seeing Metallica has made the list. Seek and Destroy. Dig it. The Toofy Band is another one. Uh, I had never heard of that band before, uh, but huge bass drop. But then it stays, you know, there's some acoustic guitar in there with it, too. Yeah. So um, a little bit more mellow, but full range bass. So uh, I'll be adding that to my own playlist. Quirty Quirts on YouTube says Infected Mushroom Slaps. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, Dean Kurt says Budgie Guts. Did we, is that a song? Are we adding that to the playlist? Budgie Guts? I don't know what that is. I can't wait to listen to this playlist later. I do have a sub, so I will be playing this yeah. on the way home when I get home. Uh, very, very cool. All right, uh, let's keep adding to that playlist all throughout the show. Keep the submissions yeah. coming in. We will keep adding songs to this playlist. We can just keep this thing going, uh, and I think that's great. This playlist isn't going anywhere anytime, so go find us on Spotify if you want to see this. Follow us, and uh, so the playlist itself is called Great Songs for Subwoofers. There you go. Speaking of subwoofers, uh, we've got... Nick from SVS uh, joining us live on the show today. Uh, he is in Munich, Germany. You've yeah. been to Germany, haven't you? Yeah. I was army brat growing up stationed. Eric was an army brat growing up, Nick. Uh, so he spent some time in Germany. Uh, you're in Germany right now. What time is it there, Nick? Uh, it is 10.22 p.m. So, you know, just about time for a uh, happy hour. If I do this, uh, I, just, I, I should let everybody know that Eric is here in the studio with me, but he can't hear a word you're saying, Nick. Only me and our director get to know what is transpiring in this conversation. Oh, uh, good, because I got some smack talk for him anyways now. Good. Good. Hey, I did hear that. Yeah, see, I turned my <laughs> headphone outside, so maybe he can hear you. Maybe, maybe. Uh, so let's see. Nick, you're in Munich, Germany. What's going on in Munich, Germany right now? Oh my gosh, it is crazy. I, I like, I believe if there's a heaven for audiophiles, it's this week in uh, Munich, Germany. It's called High End Munich. And if you can imagine three full halls, two levels of just every kind of high end audio equipment you can imagine speakers, cables, turntables, uh, headphones, DACs, like just the full gamut of any kind of audio gear is here. And it's, it's incredible, like brands that you would never see in the US. So it's, uh, it's quite a spectacle. You know, we are, uh, my day job here at Crutchfield is to train new hired advisors. And we are towards the end of that session, uh, training a new class. And we've been spending the last couple of weeks talking about our highest end home audio gear. So every day we've been talking about, uh, obviously, SVS and Focal and Paradigm and Rotel and all these great high end companies that, you know, even though we have access to this stuff, we don't get to hear it and see it and touch it and feel it every day. Uh, so to be at a show like that where it's all on display kind of sounds awesome. How do we get to go with you next year? Because uh, that would be great. You know, so it's, it's an interesting setup. You know, the, the first two days, uh, Thursday, Friday, are trade days. So, you know, the press are here, dealers, manufacturers, uh, different vendors who work with these companies. And then the Saturday and Sunday is when the consumers come out. And that's when it gets a little bit crazy because, you know, in, in Europe, it's like a family thing. Like, it's, it's sort of like a, a lot of it's a much broader segment of humanity that embraces high performance audio. And so you see that when the consumer part of the show opens up. Uh, so a lot of business is going to be done for the next two days. And then for the you know Saturday, Sunday sessions, it's all about just pure enjoyment and people sort of walking in and discovering what's new. So it's pretty cool. So uh, if you are a consumer, uh, come for the weekend part next year. Uh, it's been two years, so it's been crazy. Like I can tell a lot of people were looking forward to this after it being canceled the last two years. A lot of pent up desire for some high end audio. Yeah, and a lot of brands who have been holding st things back just for this opportunity to show them off. Nice. So CES in Vegas is really just for industry insiders, right? The general public isn't allowed into that show on any day. But this show, you said two days, the first two days are business, uh, you, know, in, you know, actual insiders. And then anybody can go see this stuff after that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's sort of like Axbona on steroids. If you know the show in Chicago, that's the biggest show in North America, um, which, you know, fills a fairly decent sized hotel. They rent basically a, a hall the size of the Las Vegas Convention Center, and they fill that with just audio brands. So, like I said, it's, you know, every single brand you could possibly think of, and then some that you never would know existed or would wonder how they exist based on some of the crazy products they're rolling out. Um, do, uh, and I hear you have some pictures you can show us from uh, walking around uh, the high-end show down there in Munich or out there, over there in Munich. 
And so I'd love yeah, I'd love uh, to see what uh, what piqued your interest as you walked around. Sure, give me a second here, and uh, I will load this up. Are you seeing that? It is coming up for us now. Yep, there we go. Looking at uh, look, looks like right, a big so hall. This, yeah, so this is just sort of an overhead view of the hall itself. You can kind of see uh, the people down there below, um, you know, in the signage. And so this is just one hall within many. Uh, to give you kind of an idea of, of what kind of attendance there there is. There's our president, Gary Yakubian, next to our stack of ported subwoofers. That's an eight-foot-tall uh, stack we have of all the SVS ported subs. And uh, Soundstage Network, a, a local media outlet based out of Canada, actually came through with a couple awards for best demo and, and best subs. So uh, Gary was nice enough to pose for a picture there. More subwoofers. Can you believe that? We wow. got the whole piano look going on with the, the black and white sealed models there with a, one of the cylinders. Uh, next to one of our walls in a static display. Uh, this picture is interesting. This just shows some of our art, but what I like about this one, this is about 10 o'clock in the morning. You see that? This guy's pocketing a beer for later on that day, which, oh, you know, I, I posted is? this up on social. <laughs> and that's a bunch of people notice, like, that guy's got a beer in his pocket. That was about 10 a.m. this morning. You see this guy munching on a pretzel. So it's very authentic. You know, when you get here, you get the Bavarian pretzels, you get beer in the morning. So uh, we try to have a good time there. Just a little wall decor we uh, set up in our booth. Uh, this is kind of cool. What are the uh, German magazines? asked us to pick some of our favorite um, American blues song, and they actually made a demo CD out of it. And they uh, a stick, uh, basically uh, attached it to the front cover of their uh, show issue. And then another magazine did the same thing with just some of our favorite demo material. So kind of a cool way to share some of the content. I know you guys are doing a playlist uh, today as well, uh, but a nice way to kind of you know build a brand with showing some, uh, some of our favorite tracks. This is actually our demo system, which you can't see here, which I'm kind of disappointed. It's a bad camera job by me. Two 3,000 mic in our demo system here, which I know is a, a special package as uh, that is the prize that we uh, we may announce here in a little bit here. So uh, we're running a 5.2.2, one of the few demos you can hear Dolby Atmos with our prime elevation, pair of micros, and then ultra bookshelves and ultra center all around. So uh, really we're uh, one of the few brands that actually does multi-channel. It's a primarily stereo show. Um, yeah, this is, this, a, is not uh, a big home, might... this is not a big home theater kind of a crowd, right? It's really more two-channel? <laughs> Yeah, not at all. We're, we're sort of, we view ourselves as a bit of a guilty pleasure because people go around and they're listening to, you know, sort of music, the Diana Krall and the Eagles and the, you know, sort of traditional audiophile tracks. And then they come to us and they hear the new Ghostbusters and Spider-Man Far From Home and Mad Max Fury Road. And we're sort of just rocking the self-enclosed uh, booth that we built. And uh, so people, you know, tend to stick around ours for a little bit just because it's so much different than any of the other experiences there. And we really try to crank it. You know, we we, uh, we try to have fun and, and be loud, but, you know, clear and, and really uh, put on a good show for people. Do the, and, uh, um, this is our 3000 in-wall subwoofer, uh, which will be coming out later this year, uh, which has also been getting a lot of attention as well. Wait, in-wall subwoofer, huh? Yes. So this is not something that we uh, have really launched or talked about at all but you know when you're in munich and we have a product coming out this year you want to at least tease people a little bit here so our first architectural uh audio product that we've ever launched so we're, we're super excited the reception has been incredible um it can't come fast enough but we got some final little uh improvements to make and we'll be ready to roll this thing out like i said uh, later in the summer early fall what's going to make an svs in wall subwoofer outperform some of the other in wall subs i mean it's not a it's not a super popular way to do bass right it's the hardest way to do bass at home uh, and there's obvious challenges with home construction and variables there and uh, amplifier can't be in the wall it's got to be out of the wall uh, and resonances and vibrations in the wall itself what are you guys doing and what are some innovations with this uh, if you can share any of those at this point yeah so really it's sort of born out of our 3000 series which is inc includes our micro subwoofer as well as our uh, our th uh, sp3000 and you know the micro really uses a, a very small enclosure which in and of itself is a uh, sort of a physics challenge so to duplicate that in sort of a tall narrow box took a lot of tweaking to the driver uh, it's got sort of that inverted cone which allows us to get great excursion um, even the grill itself had to be sort of a unique design which would allow the uh the subwoofer drivers to move in and out and push enough air to be a legitimate SVS subwoofer uh, while still fitting in that sort of architectural uh, stud bay. And then, you know, I think one of the biggest knocks on in-wall subwoofers from an installer's perspective is they've always been very difficult to install. And when you do get them in, sometimes they're not exactly spec to the sides of your studs. And so, you know, you gotta have to do a bunch of workarounds. So we worked really hard uh, for the past two years to get this to be sort of easy to install, whether it's retrofit or new construction in a regular stud bay. And then the back box has a lot of sort of uh, acoustic optimizations to reduce the amount 
amount of resonances that will go into the wall, which can kind of create that bloated or, or uh, you know, what I like to call boomy bass, uh, which isn't accurate and sort of crisp. Um, so there's a lot going on there. And then the amp has got kind of a couple of cool features as well. It's uh, 800 watts, RMS 2500 watts peak, just like our 3000 series. But it actually, with one amplifier, you can run duels from it. So you can actually have a single amplifier. And if you wanted to have two of the in walls in different parts of the room, you don't need to add a second amplifier. It splits the power and you get better, uh, more even bass response throughout the room. So um, that's sort of handy. And then the app, you know, the app comes with all of our subwoofers and especially with an in-wall it's just hard to go into the rack room and start making adjustments so you know whether the, you're the end user or an installer you can really optimize that base to get it sounding as good as possible which has been very difficult for a lot of uh, in-wall manufacturers in the past i would worry about that if i uh you know was putting a subwoofer in the wall of my home that uh every now and then the way the room is shaped uh the way the bounce the base bounces around the room you might end up with those standing waves canceled out base right there where your head is in your favorite chair uh, and there's not much you can do about moving the sub around, but you guys have thought of that, right? Yeah, I mean, we went through a lot of prototypes to get it right in, in terms of its inertness and not adding resonances, but also allowing you to easily configure in duels uh, to exactly figure that out. If you only have a you know one place to put it, you're going to end up with nulls and, and peaks in the room. But when you have two, it's much more forgiving. You get uh, much more even base response without having to worry about placement as much or, or doing some of the measurements and adjustments that you would have to do with a single sub. When in doubt, add another sub and you can't go wrong. <laughs> uh, you know, coming from SVS, we, uh, we will stand behind that advice every day. <laughs> uh, your next slide uh, was like a little tastier. Gratuitous Bavarian pretzel uh, shot there. And uh, this is just sort of the, the breakfast that we uh, served this morning to anyone who was willing to come by. So uh, that's sort of a, an interesting one there. Uh, this is another award that we won for our SB3000. Hey, don't um, leave. Go back to that. The... Stop. Go back to that picture because we had a question come in earlier. Uh, I forget where it is, but I know what the question was. Uh, I'm sorry if I don't get your name right for whoever asked it, uh, but uh, they wanted to know what happened to the metal grills. Uh, is that, did you guys stop using metal grills at some point? So our, we have models that still have the metal grills. Our uh, SB1000 1000 Pro and our 2000 Pro have transitioned to the cloth grill, but everything from the 3000 series up still uses the metal grill. Um, and, you know, a lot of this was demand. People didn't like how it sort of stuck out, but then we had a lot of people who loved the metal grill. So if you reach out to our team, um, you are able to get replacements on some of them, uh, but they are being phased out at least for the 1000 and 2000 Pro. Um, but, you know, if there's enough people who clamor, you know, we may have to bring them back as a, uh, you know, an option that you can add on. But as of right now, that's sort of how it stands between our models. Got it. I hope that answers that person's question. Uh, let me see what else we've got here. Some stuff coming in. Oops, that's not that computer. I got too many computers in front of me, Nick. You ever have that problem? Oh, I, right now I'm on one screen, so this is sort of, I feel like I'm, uh, you know, not using my normal mojo here without the second screen, but I get, the, I know the feeling. Uh, Aaron asks, Nick, did you leave with any new tech from Chicago or Munich? Now you haven't left Munich yet, but have you got your eyes on something that you're going to have to take home with you? Or did you get anything at Expona in Chicago? You know, it's it's hard to get out of our room. It's been so busy. Like I get to get out there and kind of hear a couple demos, but a, a lot of the stuff is, uh, I mean, it's even it's out of my price range even. So it's sort of like I get to go there and experience it, but you know, I'm not going to bring home a uh, a ninety thousand dollar pair of uh, speakers or as you're seeing here a uh, four hundred thousand dollar turntable. So uh, it's cool to sort of be a part of it. Um, but, you know, I think the best recommendation I had was from you, JR, the Dragonfly, which uh, I bought from my new Grado headphones. And holy crap, like I couldn't I didn't know what I was missing. So I guess I just have to come to Crutchfield. Uh, you know, the shows are, again, good for sort of seeing what's what's cool and uh, out of my range. But, uh, you know, real world, not always the best place to sort of pick up new tech, at least for uh, the regular consumer. Uh, um, so again, this was a you know really high end turntable. There, uh, this one was kind of cool. Lamborghini, uh, they sort of lent their grill to make this. Uh, I guess it's like a boom box or something. I didn't actually get to hear it, but it sort of has a, an exhaust thing going on with the multiple drivers and uh, you know, interesting uh, you know, collaboration between high end speaker and high end cars there, uh, which I thought was kind of cool. I love that. 
Uh, this, I, I don't know what you call this, but uh, I just thought <laughs> it was interesting. You know, you see, like, you wouldn't believe how many speakers have these really crazy form factors here. Um, but this was just one that caught my eye that was, uh, and, and all these pictures are from one hall. Like, imagine three halls of two levels of all this kind of crazy stuff. Um, and, you know, you can get an idea what high-end music is all about. Uh, again, another sort of cool uh, circular, that middle thing is an amplifier. Um, again, you know, probably not for my house, but, uh, you know, there, there are people out there who'd be into something like that. And, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not hating on that. Uh, this is a $28,000 RCA cable. So I found that to be uh, interesting. It gives you kind of perspective. Our entire demo system, seven speakers and two subwoofers, is about 6,500 euro. Uh, this is about triple the price for a, a single RCA cable. So again, it gives you some of that perspective of, you know, what people are uh, are sort of uh, seeing when they get to the show here and, and choosing between. A twenty-eight thousand dollar RCA cable. Yeah, that's that's what yeah. you're seeing there. So, I, 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 and I thought, <laughs> no I thought our speaker wire you know? was expensive. I mean, wow. Uh, this, I mean, I don't know what this, it looks like a speaker, but it kind of looks like, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's just had a lot going on. So I can't tell you anything about it other than it just sort of caught my eye. And they have the real, reel-to-reel tape decks there, um, you know, which a lot of audio files say is the truth in sound. Like, if you don't have reel-to-reel, -reel, you're not hearing it as the artist intended. So uh, they'll tell you all about it if you go to one of these booths and, uh, and why. If you're listening to uh, high-res streaming or CDs, you're just not getting it, even vinyl. You gotta get tape reel to reel. Vinyl real isn't good enough now. for the absolute purist, huh? You know it. Uh, and this, this might be the uh, crowning picture that I took today, a real live DeLorean uh, in the uh, streets of uh, high-end Munich. So, you know, I'm I'm not sure what kind of sound system's in there, but you know, who doesn't like a, a DeLorean? Forget, forget the Lamborghini, I will take the DeLorean. Thank you very much. Heck That's yes. what I'm talking about. So that, those are some of my highlights from uh, from day one there. Um, again, so much more to see. And uh, if you check out our social, we'll be posting pics throughout the weekend. Um, but again, just a sampling of, uh, of what we got to see here in Munich today. Um, all right, let's go. Uh, since I've got you here, Nick, we've had people dropping in some questions uh, that I thought maybe you might be able to chime in with some answers. Um, there's a kind of, maybe this might, there might not be enough qualifying information for you to give a solid answer, but let me get your thoughts. How can I figure out the number of subwoofers I need? Is there a square footage calculation? How do you know how many subs a person or a room really needs? You know, that really is uh, one of the most common questions that, that we get for our team. And, you know, there is no hard and fast rule in terms of, you know, if your room is this big, you want this many subs. It has a lot more to do with, one, your listening preferences, uh, two, what kind of speakers you have and how much bass they're able to produce. And then, you know, three is the placement. Like if you only have one place to put a subwoofer and that's a compromised place, then, you know, it's better to have two smaller ones and find two locations within the room. So um, certainly, you know, reaching out to the folks at Crutchfield and, and you know, or SVS and, and sort of giving them uh, a background on what sort of content you're listening to, what kind of speakers you have, and, uh, you know, the position where you're, you're planning on putting them that will give us some clues as to whether you need to go dual, whether one subwoofer is gonna be enough, and also your uh, your seating position. You know, is it located in an optimal spot? Is it a very large seating area? Because if you need, you know, a bigger sweet spot, then you're gonna want multiple subs to have more even base response throughout the room. Um, so I wish I could just say, yeah, if it's 20 by 30, you need three. If it's bigger than that, you need four. Uh, but it's not that simple. So it's more a matter, you know, and budget is obviously one of the things that comes into it as well, because usually that's, uh, you know, something that factors in. Um, so I hate the it depends answers, but <laughs> it generally, you know, when talking about the number of subwoofers, I will say this, if your budget is $2,000, you're generally better off getting two $1,000 subwoofers than getting one big $2,000 subwoofer if you have the space within your room, again, for the more even base response, especially especially if you have a larger sitting area. I think that might also serve as a pretty good answer for the next question from a different person. This is Besker who asks, what happens when you, uh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Brian says, been thinking of doing a home theater for a while. I like to feel the bass. So would you recommend multiple 10 inch, say four of them, or two 15s, or say if I have room, one 21 inch sub? What would be, generally speaking, what would you go with if it's home theater, gotta feel the bass? 
Yeah, if you really want to feel it, I think one of the first things you want to do is get a ported subwoofer, and they tend to be larger than sealed subwoofers. Uh, they just have a little bit more of that visceral energy, that sort of punch in your chest where you can actually feel it. Um, sealed subwoofers don't slouch, especially SVS ones, but they're a little bit more musical, a little bit more punchy, uh, better sort of crisper speed and transients, that ability to stop and start on a dime. But go with a ported subwoofer and, you know, get the biggest one you can or get two within your budget. And, you know, again, if it's uh, if it's looking to fill a very large space, then you're going to be better off with two. But if you have sort of a smaller seating area, you know, get one, put it in the right place, optimize it with, uh, you know, either the app or some measurement software and, and make sure your room is uh, is treated to a degree that it's allowing the bass to sound as good as it possibly can. But, you know, definitely if, if what you want most is to feel it, start with ported and then kind of figure out some of those other qualifications as you move further down the decision making process. And because I know that there are people out there wondering this right now, thinking about putting two subs in the same room, uh, and we've talked about this, you should not mix and match ported and sealed, right? Like, there's no benefit to that. That's not going to help at all. Can you tell me why not? Yeah, that's a hard and fast rule if you're going to go dual. And it's really because of the phase response. You know, the the sealed subwoofers, just based on their engineering, they move a little bit quicker. So if you have one sealed and one ported, uh, it's going to just lag behind by just, you know, a few microseconds. But you'll notice that when uh, you're listening to especially musical bass or really tight bass notes, you know, you're just going to you'll be able to locate the ported subwoofer where, you know, a truly well integrated subwoofer or a pair is going to sound like it's making bass for all of your speakers. And when you have these two different models that are sort of operating on, on different phases, then it's going to just sort of take that overall soundstage and, and make it not as accurate, not as tight. And, uh, you know, so generally the rule with duels, always match sealed with sealed, ported with ported. Try to get the amplifier power and the driver size as close to possible. And obviously the best scenario is two identical subwoofers if you can do it. Two identical. All right, we've got a bunch of questions. Let's try to do this one rapid fire. Uh, Anup on Facebook asks, how many awards did SVS win already in Munich? <laughs> well, we had two that were hand delivered to us. There's a, another best demo that's in the running. We had a, a Polish magazine come by uh, who wanted to take home the 3000 micro with him. Uh, so he's like, that's going in my best of show awards. But, um, you know, I, I think the count is at three and a half right now, depending on whether that uh, that other best in show comes back. But, um, you know, I, get, I think the press really comes out on Fridays. That tends to be the big press day where they're typically the ones giving out the awards. Um, today was a lot of dealers and a lot of folks from around the world, you know, coming to get an uh, idea of what's new with the SVS. And it's currently Thursday night, come. 10, 11 o'clock down there, out there, right? Yep. Cool. Uh, let's see. John asks, uh, Nick, you mentioned the Dragonfly that you bought earlier. You and I spoke uh, a few days ago. We talked about the new Grado headphones. I recommended an AudioQuest Dragonfly. You went and got it. John says, which of the Dragonflies did Nick end up with? Did you go the black, the blue, or the red, or the cobalt? The red. I think that was the one that you recommended was the red, which, yeah. uh, again, like I didn't really do any research. I just took your word for it and snatched <laughs> it up. So, uh, you know, crutchfield.com helped me out there quickly on the spot. And, uh, you know, I got to grab it before I came out here to Munich. And I told you it would absolutely make a difference uh, if you went back and forth and plug in your headphones into your laptop's headphone jack and your AudioQuest Dragonfly. Did I, was I right? Absolutely. You know, I stream from Cobuzz, which actually does, you know, ultra high res and, you know, listening before versus listening now, like I'm just, you know, again, you, you've noticed some things are more subtle, but then some things are just a lot uh, really put into focus songs that I've heard a million times before. Just that extra little detail or that extra bit of low frequency extension, um, you know, it was really noticeable more so than I thought it would be. Uh, I thought it would be sort of an incremental, but when you have really good headphones, I think it really uh, reveals itself a lot more. All right, we're going to get back to SVS because the questions are coming in pretty rapidly here. Does it help to put a weight on a sub? Marcus from Facebook wants to know. Uh, I mean, uh, if it's like dancing around the room, like some micro subwoofers have a tendency to do where they have like a passive radiator, uh, maybe. But I think the more important thing you can do is decouple it. Like if you're noticing that it's shaking the walls or you have like artifacts throughout the room, you know, we have the isolation system that you can attach just basically to uh, where the normal stock feet would go. And that takes all the vibrational energy uh, that would typically go into the floor and walls and puts it into the air. So you actually get to feel it a little bit more. And it, it keeps that, you know, again, room resonance from becoming an issue. Uh, I've not heard that uh, 
putting a weight on it can really have much of an effect. And I know there's a lot of people out there who are like, don't ever put anything on the subwoofer. That's sacrilege. Let it be by itself. <laughs> but, um, you know, I haven't really researched it, but I would say, you know, typically decoupling it from the floor in the room itself will have a greater impact than uh, than I've ever heard of, of putting weight on top. All right, next but question. But you can stack subs, too. I've heard people stack subs, which is fine as long as you have, you know, the feet and you're not, you know, scratching them. I would hope so. You have a picture of Gary with four subs next to him. So, yeah. Although yes. that was not intended for use. Those were all different subs. Uh, Brent no, asks, that didn't get any play. pros and cons of your cylinder subs. What, what, what makes those different, unique, special, better? What's the deal with those? You know, really the reason we developed the cylinders was because, you know, a, a lot of times the floor space that a subwoofer takes up can be a hindrance in terms of your ability to put it in a room. So basically what that does is verticalize, I don't know if that's a word, but verticalize the cabinet volume uh, because the, one of the reasons ported subs are able to produce so much output is they have such great um, cabinet volume and, and that just, you know, makes the sound waves that much uh, more impactful. So we took that, stretched it up. Uh, skyward and then you're able to have a smaller footprint uh, to be able to integrate sort of that huge ported subwoofer experience but in a you know taller as opposed to wider and deeper uh, cabinet. Uh, another one best place for subs on the floor or hanging in the wall so now that you guys are you know working towards uh, and you know getting out an in-wall subwoofer if you had to choose what's the best way to do it a regular standalone sub or an in-wall sub? I mean, 100%, you want a, a real cabinet subwoofer that's on the floor and, you know, taking advantage of what I was like saying before, the cabinet volume, uh, that's what's always going to get you more output, deeper base extension. There's just, uh, you know, inherent physics problems with putting a subwoofer in a small cabinet, uh, which are really tough for manufacturers to overcome, which is why there isn't a lot of great in-wall subs. So definitely want to get a cabinet sub if you don't mind it, you know, sitting on the floor. Dan asks, does SVS have a plan to build uh, headphones? I want, an, I want uh, a subwoofer. I want an SVS on my head if I can get it. <laughs> so as I typically say with all product developments, it's top secret, and we will never say never to headphones, but there's a lot of competition out there. There's not a lot of new technology. I mean, there's a fair amount of new technology with headphones, but we want to launch products that uh, are sort of game changers. And I think at this point, we're going to stick with uh, with speakers and subwoofers and maybe some uh, accessories that sort of complement those, but no headphones in the immediate future. I mean, we've had a lot of lively comments on Facebook, even so more than usual. Uh, so you've got a lot of fans on Facebook. Thanks for bringing the SVS army out today. This is great. Uh, you guys got a lot of shout outs. We've got a lot of people on YouTube as well. I'm just looking through these real quick to see if there's anything we need to answer. Uh, medieval 1980s bummed that Larry is not with you. Is Larry having a good time in Munich? Did he come with the show to the show? No, with you? Larry. Larry's actually at another show. So we would normally be having our uh, happy hour on Thursday night, uh, but Larry is doing what's called the Pro Source Show, which is a U.S. dealer show, uh, showing off some of our new gear as well. So he is uh, in the field as well, and uh, we're dividing and conquering around the world here at SBS this week. But I miss him too. Cool. Uh, a lot of great song submissions coming in. Uh, let's see. Looking to see if there's any questions we can ask you while we've got you here. I think we're all... Currently, no, a bunch of good songs. Ultimate song. Okay, I think a lot of people want to know, Nick, uh, what is your go-to song for bass? Uh, what, uh, what can, I, can, I give you, can I give you seven? Yeah, can you get, so keep somebody writing these down. These go on the playlist. Uh, seven songs coming at us. We in, have. I can put them in the chat. I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little hip hop heavy because I like a lot of you know bass from hip hop songs. So uh, my my four hip hop songs are, uh, uh, let's see here, Bad Boys from Shine. That one's a little bit of a throwback. Uh, on My Level by Wiz Khalifa. Uh, Shook Ones by Mob Deep. And Area Codes by Ludacris, another sort of throwback. All good sort of bass-heavy jams. And then I got a couple, uh, I have one uh, techno song, Under the Influence by Chemical Brothers. I mean, anything Chemical Brothers is going to give you a lot of bass. Uh, classic Rock, Bad Sneakers by Steely Dan. Great bass line there. Not exactly sort of the, like punch you in the face, but just really good transient bass to show the musicality of a subwoofer. And then my last one, we are in Germany, and we actually have a, a Blu-ray of this concert, uh, Rammstein. And uh, if you know their biggest song, Du Hast, it's an absolute showstopper here. We go from playing sort of this, like, 
German opera, which is very much like a bunch of like refined sort of older people. And then we go to do this Duhast like demo where he's like dripping blood. He's shooting pyrotechnics out of a <laughs> shotgun and like there's explosions everywhere. And there's like, you know, people in the crowd just, you know, going bonkers. So it's a great one if, uh, you know, we want to clear out the room and it's a bunch of people who we know are there to listen to audiophile music or if it's a younger crowd and we just <laughs> want to get them excited. But Duhast by Rammstein, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement and pick up their Blu-ray. I think it's in uh, Prague. Uh, or whatever they they're playing somewhere, but it's a, it's an amazing uh, concert Blu-ray, which there's not a lot of those that sound really good, but this one does. Nice, we got all those. Catch them all. We're adding those to the playlist now. I have more questions, and I don't want to just assume you have all the time in the world. Uh, do you have do you, do you have time for a few more? Fire away. All right, let's do this. Uh, let's see, Josh on YouTube. You mentioned room treatment briefly. What kind of treatment do you find to be the best bang for the buck for low end? corner foam chunks from Amazon or panels from an acoustic company. What do you recommend for room treatments? You know, I, I hate, again, it depends, but you know, base traps are sometimes what you need if you're getting some of that corner loading, which can cause, cause some, uh, some of the boominess. You know, I think it really comes down to how the waves are interacting with your room. And this is why room treatment treatments, they seem like, you know, really easy. You just stick some, uh, you know, foam co uh, cord up on the wall or sort of those egg crates, uh, but it's really about where you're putting them. And that really depends on your room. So I'd say either bass traps and sort of the, uh, you know, the wall elements that, you know, by Gick Acoustics and things like that, they can have a huge impact on, uh, on how your system performs because your room really is part of your system. And so if you can understand how the waves are interacting uh, by bouncing off the walls and you can uh, sort of manipulate that to get the best sound possible, it can, it can have a tremendous impact. So I'm sorry I don't have a specific answer, but really it's base traps and just the wall treatments that uh, that make the biggest difference. And People even are, things like carpet, like if you had a carpet, sometimes that can help you out a lot too. Yeah, that makes a big difference. People are commenting and already saying they feel more educated from watching this today. They like your answers. One of them said, Retro VHS on YouTube said, I can't wait to own an SVS sub someday. I love a company that can actually explain the why of why their subs are the best. <laughs> Well, that's very generous, and I'm probably the least educated of all the people that normally uh, represent SBS, but I appreciate that, and we're, uh, we're always trying to teach people. We, we all are big bass heads and you know, music enthusiasts, so anything we can do to drop some knowledge is, uh, is great. Um, I think maybe one or two more. Uh, Ramon's first take, movie reviews. The 3000 Micro or SB2000 for a large room, and when they say large room, they're saying it's a 13 by 17 foot room, which will, f which will fill the room better, emphasizing quality over quantity for home theater. So if you're talking about filling the room, the SB2000 is definitely going to be the way to go. Um, the 3000 Micro, it, it's like a magic trick based on how small it is and the kind of basic can produce, but the extra surface area of that 12-inch uh, driver on the SP2000 is just going to give you more output. Now, I will say, quality-wise, you're going to get a little bit tighter base and maybe slightly more accurate with the 3000 Micro, just based on that dual opposing 8-inch uh, driver configuration. It's just a little bit tighter, so uh, you're actually sort of, you know, if you're really looking to fill the room, it's the SP2000, but you're going to get slightly better quality, very slightly is what I'm saying, with the 3000 Micro. Um, so it's, you know, you're not compromising either way. But if you really like to play it loud and you want to fill that room, go with the 2000. If you maybe have more moderate tastes, then I think the micro will more than easily fill that room. You just won't be able to hit, you know, quite reference volume as you would with the 2000. Makes good sense. Eric is sitting here right next to me, uh, listening to this entire thing out of the right side of my headphones. Uh, <laughs> Eric, do you have any questions, anything you're chomping at the bit for me to ask Nick? Wow. Um... Putting you on the spot. Well, yeah, you did put me on the spot. I was not prepared for that. Um, I was following along with some of the comments, but uh, um, yeah, can you make some bigger ones? I don't know that you quite have uh, <laughs> the PB I mean, sixteen Ultra is not no, big enough for I, Eric. I, I, can you make I bigger? I feel like there's rooms that can handle is, a little bit more. Is big uh, enough for most of humanity, impact. but uh, you know, we'll, we'll, again, we'll never say never. You know, that's there, not there's big enough. Something bigger. Isn't the isn't the the answer the theme of the day? Just get another one. And then another one. <laughs> I mean, that would be my recommendation. It's like you run out of, of floor space at one point. But again, you know, we try to make products for, uh, you know, a larger segment of humanity. And I think when you get into that 24 to, you know, 30 inch driver, it's just sort of um, you're talking about like a refrigerator size cabinet. And, you hmm. know, while practical for some people, I think uh, a, a lot of folks are, are just fine with the PB16 and uh, what it's capable of in a, in a large uh, or, you know, any size room, really. 
Nick, I think we're going to start to call it here. We before we before we let you go though, uh, the people in the uh, YouTube and the Facebook are really wanting to know what that code word is, uh, so that they can get an extra twenty five entries into our sweepstakes where we're giving away two micro three thousand uh, SVS subs. Uh, and so that's uh, that that already solves the you need two right more than one. Uh, these are solid little subs. People, somebody, some one lucky winner is going to have some pretty sweet bass in their room. Uh, and uh, you have the code word, right? I do. So uh, I think my audio's cutting out. Uh, uh, oh, oh, we lo oh, we lost him. Oh, no. Uh, all right, so here we go. The code word for this sweepstakes uh, to get the extra 25 entries into the drawing is what? SVS rocks. Let me say that again. SVS rocks is your code word for 25 extra entries into those dual 3000 micro subs. Excellent. The drawing itself will happen two weeks from like right now. Uh, we'll end the drawing during our next live show and then uh, tabulate the results, pick a random winner, and that person will, will announce that name on the show that's in two weeks. Uh, Nick, do you have any parting words before we let you go? Uh, no, but we'll we'll totally throw in whatever accessories. Uh, whoever wins those subwoofers, whether they want the isolation system, the cables, wireless adapters, you know, we'll we'll trick it out with uh, whatever they need to make it uh, the perfect subwoofer for them, and and not have to buy any extra accessories. So uh, we're happy to do that. And uh, you know, I, I just. A pleasure to have uh, you on. Uh, Crutchfield is a phenomenal uh, retailer e-commerce partner to SVS. You guys do so much to educate the world about audio and, and great experiences. So uh, I appreciate you letting me you know, share a little bit of my knowledge, but you guys keep doing what you're doing. And it's going to help us all, and uh, you know, that rising tide lifts all boats. So uh, I just can't be thankful enough for being on today. Well, this is fantastic. Thank you once again. Hopefully, I'll be able to come and hang with you guys. Several people here have commented that they love your, uh, was it happy hour with SVS that you guys do on Facebook? Uh, I'd love to, I'd love to, I think Eric and I both would love to be part of happy hour someday if you're ever bringing in guests. So keep us in mind. <laughs> hey, that's a given. Cheers to that. And we'll make sure that uh, you get that invite. And one more plug I'll throw out there is uh, we have uh, the next show we're doing is uh, called the Home Entertainment Show. It's in Long Beach, California, the weekend of June 8th. So if you're in that California area and uh, you want to see us and, uh, and hear our demo systems, then uh, come visit us at the Hilton Long Beach the weekend of June 8th, and uh, you'll be able to meet Gary. And, and Larry will be there, too, so it'll be a fun time. That's where Larry's going to be. Uh, I think it's also super cool that you're hooking up whoever wins these subs with uh, whatever's needed to get them uh, hooked up and sounding right. Uh, that couldn't be more awesome. So thank you so much for that, Nick. Thank you, SVS. Tell Larry, tell uh, 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 Nick, everybody, everybody I said hi. At Gary, of course, it's a... Uh, I spoke with him a year or so ago. He's on the podcast. We've got a great podcast. You might be on the podcast soon. Uh, so we love working with you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, JR, again. Appreciate the opportunity. Rock on, Nick. Go get some sleep. Have another good day at the show tomorrow. <laughs> Will do. We'll be kicking it. Love it. Right on, man. See ya. See ya. All right. Whew. Well, that was awesome. Awesome. Did you get to hear any of that? I, did I this work heard, for you? Yeah, it did. It did not look comfortable, though. It wasn't. But, but it I wasn't really it. all that comfortable. <laughs> uh, so uh, you, you would think we would have figured out a way for the studio audience and the uh, on-screen uh, co-host yeah. to hear well, the interview. We'll figure that out someday. But sure. th that worked, right? Worked fine. It was fine for me. So. Cool. Uh, d so there was a couple things in there that I know you might have extra comments on. I think a ref uh, somebody mentioned a refrigerator. You brought a P uh, you brought an SVS sub home one time, right? I did. I had the the pleasure of demoing. Um, let's see, I think it was a, a SB four thousand, maybe. Mm, no, that's not quite big enough. It wasn't quite the no. PB sixteen. Oh, it, it was the PB four thousand. That's what okay. it was. So the uh, the ported one, and uh, that that's got some pretty good size to it. And I remember when I was I was lifting it by myself, probably shouldn't have done that, but I'm, I'm carrying it into uh, into my house and I'm walking by my son and he, uh, he looked up at me and he said, Daddy, why are you bringing a washing machine into our den? <laughs> I was like, oh boy, please, please don't tell your mommy you said that. I, I didn't want her to, uh, <laughs> yeah. to think of it as a, as a washing machine for the den, but man, oh man, the base is effortless coming from a subwoofer like that and just absolutely effortless. Um, which, you know, I, I got to say, when I first saw that we were going to pick up SVS, yeah, you know, I, I was a little concerned because... Why? Well, to me, in the past, I always associated large subwoofers with kind of muddy bass. Okay. And so when I first saw them, I was like, ooh, these are going to be impactful, but they're probably not going to be musical. 
And I couldn't have been more wrong. So uh, the, the best word I think is effortless because of their design, uh, the strength of their amplifiers, the quality of their cabinet, the research, the development that goes into it. It's just effortless based, whether or not it's music or movies. So. This has become my favorite pastime, by the way, uh, is to look through our customer reviews and see the pictures that they post. Nice. Uh, so we don't even need to wait for you to hashtag. If you're just going to throw them right on our website, we got them ready to go. Uh, this is uh, the SVS's biggest sub, the PB16. Yeah. Uh, that truly does look like it's uh, the size of a washing machine. This customer's doing it, right? Now, I'll pick on them just a little bit. The first one? But no. Well, this, this one's one. fine. Here, okay. I'll, I'll pick on this one, too. That high-gloss finish. Yeah. They mentioned that they went with that finish because they thought it made the subwoofers disappear in the room. It does kind of make it blend in a little bit more than a matte finish, but there's no making that. That's not you like can't. a cloaking device, no. right? For a subwoofer, that, that's not a thing. But uh, you can see the reflection actually does pick up some of the color of the back wall, so in some ways. It's kind of like how magicians use mirrors yeah. under the table and yeah, stuff, so that, yeah, it's kind of like that. That's it. It is a beautiful, glossy finish. Speaking of beautiful, glossy finishes. Yes. Uh, let's. Let's get this out of here real quick. Uh, this oh, is, you can, uh, you're good. I don't know. No, we're gonna hold it. All right, hold it. I'm strong. Are you okay. Strong? No. Uh, this is the uh, this is the Micro 3000. This is the actual um, model of subwoofer that is part of our sweepstakes. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got some fingerprints on it. I hope that's not coming through. But yeah, look at that. Look at the mirror. Can wow. you see my face? That's right just what we need. Is two of you. Uh huh. Great. You can't get enough. I, I love me some me. Uh, so this is the Micro 3000. Two of these is what we're giving away. Uh, and it's got dual opposing 8-inch woofers. So one on that side and one on that side. Right. And it's like 800 watts of power. It's right. A, it's yeah. a, it's, and you're going to get two of these if you win. Nice. Yeah. So, here. Yeah, anytime you have dual opposing subwoofers, it's important to have enough power to uh, do my... Let's see. Oh, well, nope, that's studio lights. Oh, there it is. Hey, hey oh, there we go. That's a cool picture. I yeah. like that. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> we should use that for the uh, for the thumbnail. There you go. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Too late. Uh, so you were mentioning the gloss finish. I thought yeah, yeah. we might want to take a look at that. That's uh, and that, So that's one of their smallest subs. Right. If not, they're absolutely the smallest sub. But it cranks. Uh, and it's nice and tight and very musical. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I love this delivery on a... On a uh, on it here. I'm sorry, you guys aren't seeing it yet. It'll come up here shortly. Uh, but a customer picture receiving oh, yeah. receiving the package on a on the step van. Yeah, very nice. That's that's to give you an idea of how big this thing yeah, is. Yeah, it's it still tough up. there, but it does take up half of the width of the back of the the, the delivery the, yeah. the, the box truck. Yeah, so. that's half. Yeah. You're right, half the width of the <laughs> right. truck. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I love uh, it. They are quite large. Some of them. Sideways back. All right, we're back to the beginning. So yeah. uh, there's an idea of some what uh, what some subs can look like. Um, I'm coming kind of all over the place. Let me get caught up here on some comments. Uh, did you have any other sort of thoughts on SVS? I know you were putting together a spreadsheet and doing research. You wanted to come into this all prepared. Yeah, you told me not to. So that was easier. <laughs> so that's what I went with. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about music uh, that makes for good demos. I'll just, you know, I, m my background before I worked in the warehouse, I was actually w at uh, our retail location here in Charlottesville, and I worked there for a number of years. And I, I found, to me, that the best subwoofer demo was just listening to maybe not super bassy music, but just playing some music with the subwoofer already going and then taking the subwoofer away so you get used to hearing that subwoofer. And even, you know, most music's full range-ish, you know, there's some music certainly that emphasizes the lower frequencies, but just by pulling away that subwoofer, it, it would feel like you've sucked the air out of the room. Mm. You did not realize what you were missing until it was gone. So um, to me, that's the most impactful way to have a, a subwoofer demo is to actually just, just play it, listen to whatever music you want, whatever you're feeling like that day, yeah. but then take it away. And yeah, yeah that's that, that's when it becomes incredibly clear how much painful. you need to have yeah, it. Absolutely. Once you have it in your life, you kind of have to have it. Uh, I see some comments coming in about the code word. I want to make sure everybody has a chance to get the proper code word entered to get their additional 25 entries on my screen now on my computer. I'm going to uh, fake enter the contest, the sweepstakes uh, with my email address. Don't worry. I will not win the subwoofer. I'll make sure uh, of it. Exactly. So uh, I'm putting myself in, and I'm going to show you here in a minute where to put in the uh, the code word. I'm going to go ahead and agree to all the rules. Uh, I think that's probably the prudent option there. Uh, so now I'm entered, right? I've got one entry into it. Uh, you can see out of a uh, number of entries, I've got one. 
Uh, and now here's where you can enter the bonus code word that we have now revealed is all one word, S-V-S-R-O-C-K-S. -S. That's the code word. If you type that in, all one word, hit submit. Now I have 26 entries into the drawing. Uh, and it looks like there might be some other ways. You might want to get out there and share this stuff on Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest and sign up for our text alerts and things like that. You might end up with more than 26 entries into the drawing. So if you really want to win two micro 3000s, that's the way to do it. There you go. Very cool. Uh, are we good on all that? I think so. Um, should we get to our poll question? Yeah. Should we reveal which of those subs was which? Sure. Cool. Uh, do we have a camera over there to talk about them again still? Yes, somebody? All right, cool. Uh, I've got somewhere in here came in a, a the poll results. Where did I see that? Uh, oh, yeah, it came in on YouTube. I've got to scroll up to find it. So many comments. I've never seen this many on YouTube uh, and Facebook before. Loving all of the SVS fans out there, all the people helping us make a playlist, and the people that submitted guesses on this uh, poll question. Uh, which of those three SVS subs is brand new? One of them was uh, open box, one of them is scratch and dent, one of them we opened brand new today just to put it on display. Which, by the way, means it's going to be outlet stock here in a few days once we get it checked back into the right. warehouse. Right. So Open box. Open outlet, box, yes. outlet stock, open box. If, yep. So technically, none of these are new because they've all three been opened, right? Yeah. But which one would we open today? Which one's the newest? Yeah, uh, <laughs> SBS sub is new stock on YouTube, 50% guest B. Wow. 28% guest A. Okay. 21% uh, guest C. Hmm. So B is the overwhelming winner here. It's got uh, more votes than any of the other ones. Uh, I haven't seen the Facebook results yet. Coming at me now. Sweet. What do we got here? Uh, which sub is new? Sub B gets the most votes at 43%. So on both YouTube and Facebook, sub B got the most votes as the one that is brand new. Interesting. Uh, sub C got the second number of votes on Facebook at 39%. Sub A was voted at 18%. Uh, and uh, you want to go over there and reveal? I think uh, you, you want me to? I think you sure. sure. I can do that. Uh, and so I've got the post-it note. I've got it written down. I know which one is which. And uh, this, this kind of worked out pretty great. So now don't let me mess this up. I won't. So uh, everybody guessed B, like the majority of so, people guessed so that, that's, B. So this is which one everyone thought it was. Yeah. Can you maybe do another 360 on that one before sure. we reveal if that's the new one or not? I can like, do this. Yeah. Yeah. Is there, are you seeing like in person, you can see the top, you could look at the bottom. Like, is yeah. there any indication to you personally, like, is this one brand new or scratch and dent mm. or outlet stock? Can you tell? Ooh. You've got experience with this. Yeah. So I can see... Just the tiniest little, I don't know if we can get in that tight or not, but. Do we have I his mean, mic on? Can people at home hear him from over there? Okay, great. And I mean, if you're at home seeing that and you're looking at it on a, on a phone or something, you, you might not be able to get in tight enough to even see that. So there might be a little spot on the back of this white sub. So um, and it's like a little black spot right there. So that was everybody's or the majority of people's guess. Uh, Subwoofer B, that one's scratch and dent. Yep. That one is not brand new. That one is uh, the the one of the three subs on the table now that is in the worst shape. Yeah. Uh, and that's how bad it is. It's got to be looking really good for us to sell it to you over our website, through our phones, uh, anything like that. You have to know that it could actually have a scratch or dent. <laughs> and it could be something that's visible. Uh, so it can't guarantee it's going to be this mild every single time. Uh, but that's uh, that's how good Scratch and Dent can look. Uh, and for those at home wondering, uh, the sub-labeled A, that one is open box. Uh, so that one shouldn't have any scratches or dents or blemishes on it and is basically like new uh, condition. Even the box that it came in is looking pretty good. It didn't get roughed up in shipping at all. Like this is like new. It, the box has been opened. Uh, that uh, that's what you're looking at there on sub A. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that means that sub C is our brand new sub, the one we opened today. And uh, what's gonna happen to that sub is we're gonna put it back in its box. 
send it back over to our returns processing center where somebody is going to take it in. And even though we didn't do anything with it, they will test it to make sure it 100% works as advertised and that it looks like new, everything is there and it will be sold at a discount just because we opened it right here on Crutchfield Live. That's uh, that's how we roll here at Crutchfield. Thank you, Eric, for being- How'd I do? You did wonderfully. Awesome, awesome. You were really good. Hey, throw I'll, on the resume. It was having you in another room and seeing you <laughs> on that? camera was more like normal. Like <laughs> right, that's, right. So, that's how it that's works right. now. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, looks like a question coming in on Facebook. Bradley asks, I was trying to figure out which manufacturer offered the first sub for home use. The best I could come up with was Bose. I know mm. that Audiophile Dad never had one on his Primo, uh, Primo system in the 60s. Uh, so, yeah, powered subwoofers weren't super common right. in the 60s, 70s, uh, old school two-channel systems, right? Powered right. subs. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to Google it uh, like anybody would. Uh, do you, you don't happen to know, do you? I mean, I know that Bose was pretty early on with offering, uh, you know, we would think of it as a subwoofer. They call it the Acoustamass Bass Module, and they paired up that with their little jewel style, you know, lifestyle speaker, yeah. speakers, right? Mm -hmm. And that, uh, typically that was a passive situation. So, you know, it acted like a full range speaker because you had the combination of the woofer, it was crossed over, it's in the highs to the, the, uh, the jewel cube. Um, but it certainly appeared like a subwoofer. So that might have gotten the, the ball rolling. I, I don't know. That's the actual answer. I do not know. <laughs> yeah, neither one of us knows that much history of when the first uh, powered sub came out, but it's been a while. Uh, yeah. I started here in 1996, and we've been selling powered subs longer than that. So mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Have we? Uh, let's take a look and see how we're doing on the Spotify playlist. You guys have been adding songs to it this whole time, right? Uh, when w I, I put... 10 songs on there oh, wow. this morning. Uh, you added like another five or six, mm -hmm. and uh, where are we at right now? There have been a ton of submissions coming in while we've been talking, uh, and so the numbers aren't even updating here. I can't, uh, 66, 60, okay, okay, gotcha. 69, we ended up at 69 right Sweet. now. That's awesome. Uh, and then Spotify is doing a pretty nice job of recommending some additional songs it thinks were with thinks should we should put on this playlist. Not doing, it's not doing a bad job. No, that's great. Uh, Seven Nation Army is another great song. Good. Uh, some of the songs I recommended have good bass lines, right? They're not heavy duty like right. rap or you know gangster yeah, stuff. Like it's not just bass all over the place. Sometimes yeah. it's really articulate musical bass, things like that. Yeah, tight bass. I love ba like I said before, like bass drops when you're getting more than just one frequency of bass. Uh, absolutely. I think that just shows that you know. It, subwoofers aren't just important for bass heavy songs because we do have an assortment of uh, a different genres. Yeah, no, it, and, it's uh, all over styles. the place yeah. here. Absolutely. Very cool. Great job, everybody, coming up with a list. We got a few final comments here. Uh, Metal Ghost did guess that C was the brand new one. So nice job, Metal Ghost. You were uh, one of the few that actually guessed that. Uh, Ramon said, I can almost smell the mint. Somebody said it looked minty fresh. Mm. Uh, let's see, when is the drawing for the free, uh, for the S, uh, SVS Micro 3000s? Two weeks from right now, on the very next Crutchfield Live. Uh, can somebody give me the date off the top of their head? I don't have it in my head right now. What's the date for that one? June 2nd. June 2nd is when we're doing the drawing. Uh, thank you very much, very nice. SVS Rocks was the code, we got that. Over here on Facebook, Miguel says, great standards for scratch and dent, guys, and thanks for being right up front to say that it is the better side of scratch and dent. Yeah, we yeah. didn't, we didn't, the last thing we want to do is set your expectations that every scratch and dent right. looks perfect. It right. doesn't. They're, it really is scratch and dent. But our standards are very high for right. how good it has to look. If it doesn't look good enough that, you know, to meet our standards, we have other ways. We sell it to employees. That's the stuff Eric and I get to buy, uh, is the stuff with big scratches and big dents and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, so Terry says M and K. I don't know. Is that an answer to the question about the first subs? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, let's see. Am I forgetting anything? I think we're about ready to wrap this thing up. Yeah, I think, I think that covers everything. Yeah, I'm just looking around the room making sure I didn't totally forget something. We got the thumbs up from Alexis monitoring on Facebook. Thank you, Alexis, for doing that. Uh, very helpful. Landon, thank you for running everything. Is there more? Yeah, read the last comment. Oh, uh, the last comment? Uh, let's see. Metal Ghost, thank you uh, guys, thank you so much. I skipped lunch and dodged my boss just to hang out with you. Oh, that's awesome. Heck yes, that's, <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, that's what we're going for. Metal Ghost, thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you entered in uh, and you uh, give yourself a chance to win. These are great subs. Thank you to everybody that's been commenting, uh, helping us build this playlist. Go listen to it now, especially if you have a subwoofer. Come back to us uh, in two weeks, June 2nd, where we're giving away these SVS. Uh, and uh, who knows what else we'll have in store for you then. We're going to figure out and, have, and, and hopefully, hopefully another fun hang with Metal Ghost and everybody else. Uh, thank you, everybody, on Facebook and uh, YouTube. And uh, this is JR. And on behalf of Eric, we're signing off. See you next time. See ya. It's 9 o'clock in the morning, dear. Been up for hours, it seems. Just about my time. Back to reality I guess it's time to go Find out where we've been I guess it's all the same Living Thank you.